protocol for today's meeting was previously reviewed by Corporation Council, who indicated to me it is compliant with the executive orders issued by the governor and fair for those watching from a remote location. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'll start off with a roll call and please verbally indicate that you are present when your name is called. Commissioner Kelly? Present. Commissioner Parkins? Present. Commissioner Motto? Here. Commissioner Tiki? Present. Myself, Commissioner Harger. Alternate Commissioner Laskos? Present. Mr. Rossetti? Present. Mr. O'Neill? Here. Mr. Panico, our consultant? Here. Ms. Vernassos, our recording secretary? Present. Ms. Uh, Charbonneau, our stenographer? Present. Uh, just for the record, Commissioner Wadomski and Alternate Commissioner Usel indicated to me they would be unavailable for this evening's meeting. Alternate Commissioner Laskos, you're being seated for Commissioner Wadomski. Understood. Thank you. A couple of points before continuing with today's agenda. This is the commission's 44th meeting being done via a live streaming process. Mr. Rossetti will act as the Zoom meeting host. While commissioners will be able to make comments throughout the meeting, the chair asks that you please identify yourself and wait to be recognized by the chair before speaking to make sure we're not all speaking over each other and to make sure our recording secretary is clear as to who is speaking. Our two agenda items are public hearings. After each public hearing is announced, the applicant will begin by making a presentation of its proposal during and after the presentation, the commission will have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which can be answered at that time or after the presentation. After the presentation has been completed and after the commission has finished asking questions, members of the public will be invited to address the commission about the proposal. Members of the public addressing the commission during today's public hearing need to be mindful of the following. Number one, after you are identified by Mr. Rossetti, please state and spell your name and state your address to assist the recording secretary and stenographer when doing the minutes and transcript of the public hearing. Number two, all comments or questions are to be directed to the chair and to the chair only, not to the applicant and or his associates. Three, no dialogue is permitted between the public and the applicant or any of the applicant's associates. Four, all comments from the public should address specific criteria of the zoning regs and the merits of the application. Five, all comments from the public should be new information and not a repeat of comments previously presented. Unless a member of the public has new comments to or questions of the chair, Members of the public who wish to address the commission are asked to briefly indicate whether or not they are in agreement with a previous speaker and not repeat the same testimony. Members of the public are expected to practice appropriate etiquette by being quiet, observant, and respectful. Disruptive attendees may be removed from verbally participating. After all, members of the public who participate today finish addressing the commission, the applicant will be given the opportunity to respond to public comments or questions. After the applicant and or his associates have concluded the presentation, they've answered all questions and they have addressed all concerns from the commission and or public. And if no further information is needed by the commission, the chair will ask for a motion to close the public hearing. If the commission feels further information is needed, the chair will ask for a motion to keep the public hearing open. If the public hearing closes, the chair will poll the commission for a consensus on whether or not there is any reason not to vote on the application at some point. And a reminder to the commission that once a public hearing has opened and until it is closed, commissioners are not permitted to make any public comment, discuss any part of the applicant's presentation or receive additional information from anyone. So we will begin with the first public hearing, application 21-20, PDD number 39, Constitution Square, Rose T. Zoning Company, would Commissioner Motto please read the public hearing notice? Sure. 
<laughs> Shelton Planning and Zoning Commission of the City of Shelton, Connecticut hereby gives notice of a public hearing to be held virtually on Wednesday, September 8th at six o'clock via Zoom to consider the following. The first item is initiation of application number 21-20 PDD number 39, Shelton Heights. Rose Tizo and Company LLC on Waterview Drive, Assessor's Map 65, Lots 27 and 28, for a major modification of a PDD for the development of an 80,000 square foot facility containing warehouse, office, and manufacturing uses. Rose Tizo and Company LLC prepared the plans titled Detailed Development Plans PDD Number 39 Proposed Warehouse. The lot contains 11.18 acres and is generally bounded as follows. Northerly by 35 Waterview Drive, Easterly by Waterview Drive, Southerly by Constitution Boulevard, Southwesterly by Assessor's Map 65, Lot 26. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, uh, <clears throat> The chair would like to know for the record, this application was accepted for review on August 10th, 2021. Since that time, several documents were posted to the city's website, an application for modification of PDD number 39, a statement of uses and standards for PDD number 39, site plans, detailed development plans, revised detailed development plans, engineering report, and pictures. Mr. Rossetti, were any comments received from the public that we need to acknowledge for the record? Yes, um, there were nine letters received. Um, in addition, there were some comments um, from phone conversations that our staff picked up on uh, in general. And if you'd like, I can kind of give a brief overview of those. Um, sure, go ahead. Okay. Um, well, actually, you know what? I think the, the better thing to do first would, would be I backpedal. Um, let the applicant present first, and then I'll, I'll bring up these okay, comments because the, I think they'll address the questions. Yeah, at the beginning of the public hearing, I mean the uh, public portion. Yeah. We'll go back to that. Okay. So um, before I go on, are there any reports from the city engineer and the fire marshal we need to uh, acknowledge? Both. Um, wrote in, however, they were turned in late on Friday, so we were not able to get them uploaded on time, but they were both favorable with this project. Um, this project has seen previous approvals uh, for much bigger proposals, mm -hmm. uh, and they did not have any outstanding concerns um, and any details that they need to, to iron out, they'll address when the applicant comes in for their building permits. Okay. Um, all right, so let me move on to the applicant. Who is representing the applicant? Uh, I am uh, Robert Sento. Uh, my uh, offices are located at One Corporate Drive, Shelton, Connecticut. Okay. I'm here with um, Pat Rose, my architect, and my son, Rob Sento. Very good. Um, so good evening, gentlemen. Uh, if you want to go ahead and uh, proceed with your presentation, and I'm sure the commission would be especially interested in hearing the history of this whole area uh, and what had been approved for this site in previous uh, by a previous commission in 2002 and modified by um, members of the commission in 2008. So the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chairwoman. Um, the history on the property is that it used to be along to the state of Connecticut as a hospital uh, for, uh, for, the, for ill people. And then it was closed down. And in 1985, a, a gentleman by the name of Chris Vargas uh, did a joint venture with People's Bank. And they turned this whole property into an industrial park. Mm -hmm. uh, they built that road uh, that uh, goes from exit 13 up to the property um, and they, started to sell the lots to industrial companies. Um, one of the companies who bought that, bought that land was a tenant of mine. And I bought the property from him in about 19, I want to say 1995 or give or take, or no, maybe 1993. So I've owned the property uh, close to 25 years, been paying taxes on the property. 
and the property was totally zoned industrial. Uh, in 1995, the Riverdale uh, development went in and uh, they, they rezoned that portion of the property from industrial to residential. Uh, and they built some condos on that side of the street. Um, in what was that year again? For uh, 95. 95 for Rivendell, yeah. okay. For Rivendell, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in 2002, in 2002, I, I brought in a um, eight story, um, 200, I believe it was 231,000 square foot building in about 700 parking spaces. Uh, the name of the project was the Bank of China, because we uh, we copied the uh, Bank of China IMPAYS project, and um, we had all our approvals to do that project, and we have an STC permit for that project, um, but we never moved ahead on it because of economic conditions, and because that section of Shelton never developed into a, a really an office section, it was really kept to us natural desire of being a, a R and D manufacturing location. Mm -hmm. um, so that is basically the, uh, the history of the zoning. Um, we're bringing in a, a, a very, very, very high end company. Uh, Pat is gonna walk you through the design. Uh, it is a truly uh, a more of a manufacturing and, and office and research, research versus is not a warehouse operation. Oh, okay. uh, about 44% uh, of the space is set aside for, for the storage of their product that they ship out. Um, it's large equipment that's built. Uh, this is going to be their corporate offices, 28,000 square feet of the space. 20, Rob? All together, 35 right now. Okay. All to get, well, I think it's 28, and uh, as the office and the balance of the uh, th 35 is uh, um, R&D type space. Uh, so it's, it's more of a office R&D in light manufacturing location. Um, what Robert, I'll just go over what, what the questions on the tenant. Um, so I like to turn it back to Pat. I like him to walk you through the building because it is a very it's a very beautiful building that's going to be a real uh, um, asset to the town. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it represents new jobs. Uh, this company is coming in from outside the area. They're not here now. Um, so it, it's a wonderful opportunity for the state of Connecticut and the city of Shelton. And with that said, I'd like to turn it over to Pat. Okay, thank you. Um, Alex, is it possible for you to let me so I can share a screen and uh, show you uh, the presentation? You should have that ability. Okay, thank you, sir. Can everybody see that? Not yet. Not yet. If you can't, I'll move it over to the other screen. That's it's not coming up. Now, can you see it? Yes. Yes. Very good. Excellent. All right. The project uh, that we're talking about is lots 20 and 21, which for the most part frontage on Waterview Drive and a little corner of it, it's Constitution Boulevard down here. Mm -hmm. 11 acres, um, the topography slopes from the north to the south, um, with relatively level sections um, towards the north, and then it's much steeper as you get towards corner of Waterview Drive and Constitution Boulevard. This is the Riverdale condominium on this side of the uh, Waterview Drive. This mm -hmm. orientation, Pitney Bowes is up to the top. Uh, what we're proposing is an 80,000 square foot uh, building, housing, office, manufacturing, and storage. The entrance to the property is in the northeast corner uh, off Waterview, where we come up 
to a plateau at where we have entrance and parking to the building, main entrance here, uh, parking along the bat on the north side, connected to the sidewalk, and then coming around there's parking field to the south. And further around is the area where there are four loading docks and a one drive-in door. And then there's some more parking at the end, um, which is more associated with the loading area. So what we're proposing is, is taking this site and because it slopes from the north to the south, we've got our loading docks on the south side of the building where it's a lower elevation, four foot lower. Is the main entrance on the right side, on the east side? On the east side, correct, is right here. Yep. Okay. And what we've done is that we're showing this cut line here, which changes color between the greens. That's where we're gonna be clearing um, and filling in this area to create our, our plateau. But we're keeping a majority of the edge along Waterview Drive of the existing vegetation. We're not, we're not going all, we're not blowing all of the vegetation out. We're keeping it um, in its natural state. Do you have a percentage of um, what would be cleared for the site versus what would remain uh, natural? Impervious is. I think you wanted. Our impervious is thirty-seven percent. You know, it, it's it's probably forty percent of the sites being kept. Okay. So, and what we've done uh, at the at the entrance, we've got a retention pond. That's where that's going to happen. Um, so we're we're using the grade um, for drainage um, for infiltration. What I'd like to show you next is a section through our site, through Waterview Drive, and then onto Riverdale Condominium. This is at, close to the entrance because that's that's where it's most open. Mm -hmm. The rest of the edge is all heavily vegetated with existing vegetation. So what we have is their building. Somebody similar. enlarge that, please. Yeah, okay. That's much better. Better? Oh, yeah. Good. <laughs> their buildings sit lower than us significantly. Um, and then it slopes up to Waterview Drive. And then this is our vegetation along Waterview Drive. And then we go up to a plateau higher so that if you were just to take a straight view across this, you're, you're going to see at this one location, you're going to see the upper portion of the building, not going to see anything below that and anything further away is cut off by the plateau itself. So you can't even see the loading dots from there. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's pretty much isolated, just the front elevation of the building to be able to see. And is that the same for someone that would be standing down at the corner of Waterview and Constitution Boulevard? Corner of Waterview and Constitution Boulevard, you will not see this building because it's, for the most part, it's, there is no of vegetation along Waterview and Constitution at all. Plus, there's a rock cut um, at the corner of Waterview and uh, Constitution. Mm -hmm. This uh, you you won't be able to see that because you're so far back and you're so much higher. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Let me zoom back out again. I need to go to the next slide. This this slide are some pictures that were taken on Riverdale on the condominium site, just trying to show you know what we have for vegetation as we look towards look out this is looking out towards waterview drive same thing oops, same thing here and same thing that's what's looking out towards waterview drive this is the entrance here with the esplanade in the middle that we that you have some open view to the one building um, mm -hmm. on our side the rest of you really can't see you go down don't go down don't you hit some more so, and again, just uh, this is the site plan where we've got parking. We've added a guardrail all along the cut area. We created our located our dumpster enclosure here. We've shown what the cut line is for 
clearing of trees. So you can see this whole area here remains as natural vegetation along Waterview Drive and this large section along Constitution, you know, it's quite a, quite a distance. And when you, when you look at the distance to the buildings um, from even this loading area, it's about 250, 235 feet just to Waterview Drive from our loading area. Mm -hmm. And it's 400 feet to the closest building in Riverdale. Mm -hmm. So it's a significant distance away. As far as zoning wise uh, for the PDD number 39, which is which already exists and is not being zones not being changed, we meet all of the building coverage, um, impervious area, um, set and setbacks um, for the project. We meet all of those zoning requirements. Our building is 36 feet high. And we're allowed 110 foot building because it was originally a, the PDD was for an eight story building. Mm -hmm. so, uh, our building coverage, uh, we meet the 20%. We are at 16.4. We're at 37. We're allowed 60. So we meet all of those criteria. Mm -hmm. As far as parking, we, we have provided 236 spaces on the site. We really require 200, 206 based on the parking calculation, which uh, separates the office manufacturing at 3.5 spaces per thousand square feet and the warehouse or storage areas at 1.5 per thousand square feet. So that's, that's where that 206 parking spaces comes up to. What we're showing along here are about 30 spaces that we could defer and not build at this time, prepare, but not build them completely you know, along the loading dock. So that, that gives us even, even more or green space. Mm -hmm. What we've done for the drainage is that uh, parking lots drain to a swale um, with a pipe along this area. And then that feeds back to this pond, which will infiltrate into grade. So we were not even, we're not putting uh, infiltration underground associated uh, with the project, only doing a pond, which will infiltrate and evaporate. So, mm -hmm. uh, straightforward. What is the um, elevation change from the driveway entrance down to the loading, the fence below the loading dock? Okay. Well, <laughs> Driveway entrance is at uh, 272, elevation 272 mm -hmm. in this location right here. Mm -hmm. The building is set at 288 for the finished floor. So you're coming up to the building plateau. Mm -hmm. Then you're, when you're coming around the building, you're going down four feet. So this location, you're at 284. Mm -hmm. And then when you're out here, this parking area you're at 280 okay so but if you look at what uh what if you drive is you know it starts at 230 mm -hmm. down here and comes back up to 270 so there's a significant grade change between the plateau and the road coming up and that that helps in, in hiding hiding the facility mm -hmm. okay Uh, soil erosion control, you know, we, we provided all the soil erosion control measures that we need to as far as hay bales, check dams. Um, we're going to have a temporary selling pond here, you know, during construction while we're building this. Gravel, gravel drive or exiting to, for tracking control in this location, doing all that. Details associated with solar control. We've done a good uh, landscape plan where we've got major trees um, coming in along this edge. We've got a screen along this edge up to Kalibos' Drive. And then we've got trees and islands in this parking lot. Uh, we've added trees along this loading dock area, uh, screening of that. 
there. And then there are, are bushes uh, along the edge of the facility in this location and some in this location. And then there's plant things associated with wetlands, plant things associated with the infrastructure detention pond. And we're using a, a soil stabilization mat on these fill areas so that they remain stable and they get a, 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 a they get a uh, grass seed that's made for soil stabilization. Mm -hmm. uh, lighting plan. You know, we, we've gone through that and we're not spilling any light outside of our property line at all. We look at in detail at it, it's, it's most of it is, is zero by the time it gets to the back side of the vegetation and everything. Is that due to the distance from where the light poles are situated and the fact that they're, do you aim them down or? Yeah, they're all aimed down. I mean, you know, is there somewhere where you're going to be able to see the underside of a light? Yes, but it's not spilling light on away from that fixture. It's spilling around that fixture. Okay. Uh, details we've changed. Uh, this is the timber timber guardrail that we've shown. And we've gone to a co extruded concrete curb. Uh, the building itself is here. That's the the main envelope. The next drawing shows the user and how he's laid out the facility with offices in this location, manufacturing here and here, and then uh, storage of their equipment being assembled and then shipped out in this location. Mm -hmm. And there is a wall that is, it looks like it uh, separates the um, office part from the uh, manufacturing part. Yes, the, the manufacturing parts are, are contained in this, there's labs and in, in, in this location, and then there's assembly in this location in here, and there's, there's a wall that separates that. Yep, okay. Building itself, we are doing something that's very similar to the building that's just been completed on Waterview Drive. Everybody's seen it. We have a split face, gray split face CMU up to eight feet, and then a silver metal panel above that. Oh, it's metallic, it's a metallic. Oh, yeah, that's a yeah. piece of it. But I mean, in this building, because of the tenant and what they've requested, there's a, there's a bunch more windows that we've incorporated into the building. We've got a nice glass front entrance here, and then there are windows all along that front entry. And then on the side of the building, there are windows. And then even in the manufacturing portions, there are higher windows and, and storage there are windows. So it's a little, a little different than exactly like the other building, but we're using the same materials. Mm -hmm. Very handsome. Okay. This, these are pictures of the completed building on Waterview Drive, just to you know, show you what the panel is, what the CMU is. This is across the street, around the corner. Around the corner, across the street, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Silver metallic panels, gray CMU, windows that are, that are silver, with silver mullions. And the split rock is going to be brought down to grade. Every yes, everything yes. except for the loading dock side. Yeah, the only place that it's not Tony is where we where we got the loading dock side. That there's mm -hmm. there's concrete at that location. Okay. Um, but the rest of them, that it comes down to the floor elevation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's okay as long as the grade outside matches that elevation. Yeah, and our elevations are, are first good. as we saw had quite a bit of showing foundation. The, yeah, the main foundation portion that's shown is along this elevation here, where the loading docks are and going around the corner, the grade starts rising up as it goes around the corner. Um, at the front elevation, it, it rises up to where we meet. There's a little bit and a little bit here, but not much. And along this section, it is very little actually along this portion because the grade comes up actually and the grade is up high. And in this corner, there's exposed foundation, but nobody's going to see that because it's- Numerically, around. when you say it gets close, it looks to me like it's about 
three to four feet. Yeah, it's four feet along over here. It absolutely is four feet because oh, the loading dock is along the side. Down. Along this side, this thing here, and and at the main entrance area. No, we no, that's not. No, no. That's, that's what you're what you're looking at, Tony. That may be deceptive to you. I'll, I'll let me blow this up. Maybe that'll help. Is you're seeing a dotted line at the bottom. The mm -hmm. grade line is actually up higher. See where the bottom of this door is? That's the grade line. Okay. That's the grade line. You're, you're seeing the footing. It's, it's just a footing that's shown below grade. Okay. So it, it's a little deceptive when you're looking at it. All right. Especially if it's small. <laughs> I can understand. But this, say this corner, that's the grade line here, and it comes to zero. You know, on that this, south this corner with the most point. exposure. Where is that found? I'm sorry. The, this corner with the most exposure, the right hand side of the rear elevation. Yeah, the right hand side of the rear elevation is the lowest portion of the of the site. Yes, that's where by the loading area. It's near the loading area, but it's it's facing uh, the adjacent lot. You know, it's facing to the to facing the, Constitution. The yeah, it's not facing. It's facing Constitution, or no one can see. It. No one can see it. It's, no one. The rear elevation it. is the west elevation. Correct. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, this line right here on the front elevation is the grade line. So there's a little bit of exposed foundation, but this triangle, but it's it's mainly up close to the grade. You go go to the our, our picture. So yeah. Tony, just that, that those are the images that we you're gonna have. Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, I, I can understand that. I, I wasn't find, finding that reflected on your drawing uh, no. site. No. Right. Okay. okay, go on, Mr. Rose. Um, that's pretty much Bob. Do you, we have some, we have Robert. you have some things to say on the. Do you want me to go through some of those questions? That they, well, I think anything to do with the tenant, maybe you can yeah. just talk about what the tenant. No, absolutely. So, um, can you guys see me? No. No. Move do you over. want to see me? Yes. <laughs> How's my hair look? Okay. <laughs> um, ju just some quick things uh, 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 about the tenant and what their hours of operation are and the amount of people they're going to be having there and things of this nature. Um, they, they have one shift. The shift starts at 8 in the morning and ends at 5 p.m. Um, the, the people will be coming to the office at the same time. So the manufacturers, the authors, the, the, you know, there's not really warehousing people. There are some, but not a lot. Everyone's going to be coming during those hours between eight and five. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, there's only going to be 30 employees at this facility. At the end of the 10 year lease, there'll be a maximum of 72 people at this facility. So to Pat's point earlier about the park, we don't need all the parking. The tenant doesn't require all the parking. At least this tenant doesn't for this first 10 years. Their maximum employee count at this facility is going to be 70, 72 people at the end of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, what are the number of deliveries that we're expecting per day? In the beginning, they're going to be getting two to three deliveries a day. At the end of the 10 years, they're expecting to have 15 deliveries at the most a day. They make a very large piece of equipment that it, it, it's, it's not like a logistics center or anything of that nature. You know, if someone came three times to pick up one of these, it'd be a very big deal. Mm -hmm. What kind of um, truck service are we talking about? Are we talking UPS size for deliveries or are we talking tractor trailers? What is it? Do you know? Uh, I asked that question and it's really hard for them to tell. It could be, you know, out of that maximum of 15 deliveries a day, it could be, you know, five FedExes and, you know, 10 tractor trailers, possibly at, at the worst case scenario, they kind of told me, mm -hmm. you know, they're saying 15 a day. I mean, maybe if those 15 on one day would be tractor trailers, but they're not anticipating that at all. Mm -hmm. And at 15, it could be FedEx, box trucks, you know, whatever. There, there, it's not a logistic center whatsoever. It's a research development mm -hmm. assembly, and then they ship their product at the end of the day. Right. Okay. So um, right now, operations, including shipping, would terminate at five o'clock? That's what they're projecting as of today. Yes. Mm -hmm. The raw material comes in and then it goes back out as a different product, right? 
Yeah, parts come in, they assemble the parts in there, and then, they, you know, they, they ship everything out. Okay. Mm -hmm. The majority of those trucks, they tell me, are going to be smaller parts on box structures from FedExes and things of that nature. Okay. They're going to come in, they're going to put it into the piece of equipment, and then ship it out. Okay. Right. It's not a warehousing operation. It's not a logistics operation. It, it, you saw the, the, the plant, 35,000 square feet of it, is some type of R&D they're putting their, their executive office that's based in Manhattan right now. The hmm. CEO and the CFO are from Greenwich and New Canaan. And oh. this reverse commute is actually a savings in time for them. And mm -hmm. they want to employ in, you know, the Valley region. So that's the, the, the purpose for building here and why. Okay. So this is R&D, light manufacturing, corporate offices. Right. All, all the distribution will be distribution of what they're making in the space, right. which is very large pieces of equipment. How uh, how long would this build building take to uh, erect? Well, you sound like the tenant now. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, we're projecting, we hope the, the, the tenant's asking us to complete this within 12 months. Uh, we hope to God we can make that, but I, I, we have a buffer in there, of, I think four, four months. months. So 16 months on the outside. Okay. Before, yeah. All right. All right. So, um, uh, do any commissioners have any questions of the applicant? Commissioner Tiki has, I think I have a couple questions. Go right ahead. Thank you. Um, just a couple of questions as um, you went through that presentation. Um, I, I'm hearing you say large equipment. So at any point, will the equipment be stored outside or will it always be stored as it's being built in, in the building? No, it's very expensive equipment. It'll be stored inside. Okay. And then to build the building, is any blasting needed there in that area as you build out the building? We we hope this is Bob Sinto. We hope not. It's <laughs> okay. uh, um, Commissioner, we did some test holes, and we went down to uh, 85, 285, and we didn't hit any rock at the high point. OK, so we believe that if we're lucky and in the in the in the in the elevation of the building, you said a 288. So we're hoping to God that we don't hit any because we have this timetable. So hopefully we, we don't think we have any blasting about. OK, OK. And then um, that reminds me, I know at the top we said the city engineer and the fire marshal did come back with favorable letters if if uh, Josh and um, staff we can just make sure we, we post those letters up just for the public to see and for others to see um including the the commission um and then i don't know if we could pull up the map but just um i would just love to just be walked through the um where we think that the trailers and then some of the ups trucks or trailers would be coming through um is it the same at same way that employees would be coming through the parking lot well there's only there's only there's only one entrance to the site and that's at the very high end of the site, and that is uh, that's a, a, a good distance away from the condominium entrance. Uh, so they would. Uh, you got an arrow? Can you see it? Uh, no, no, the not screen's not up. Give us a second, please. Can you see it now? Yeah. We, yeah, now. Okay. So your entrance to the site is here off of Waterview Drive. And then a truck is going to come in. He's going to turn, make this turn here, come here, make that turn, continue down here, and he's going to back in to these docks right here. Um, can I just ask the fire marshal had no concerns that there isn't a continuous driveway around the building? I don't know what the fire marshal's letter said, but we you can get you can get to three quarters of this building, and it's a fully sprinkler building. Okay. All right. Is there a, a map of the area that shows the adjacent streets available? Let's see if I still have it here. 
the only this Waterview starts and stops at Constitution. There are no other intersecting streets. No, I know that. It just um... oh, you you mean in terms of the neighborhood streets? Yeah, okay. yeah, these yeah. Jason streets. Yep. Here we go. Hey, this. No water. This is, these are the two lots right here. Yep. This is Waterview. Mm -hmm. It's a condominium on the other side of Waterview, and this is the building that's just been finished. Mm -hmm. Here, so this it runs Constitution, Waterview all the way around back to Constitution. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you if you drive uh, up that road at Waterview and you see the growth of trees on the right-hand side. You just have to make that path, and you see those trees on the right-hand side, on the condominium side. You can see how it's virtually impossible for anybody in those condominiums to see this project at any time. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Chairman, um, I just have one more, more question. I was, was gonna ask if you had any further. Go thank ahead. Um, and thank you for those answers. Um, just um, just so I can understand, I, I think I heard you say that in terms of employees, I think you said there's 30 at, at the start, maybe growing to about 72. Um, so, um, but you have parking for 206. So what was the thought with adding, you know, having over 200 spots for the amount of employees yeah. that you be on track? No, no great question, uh, Commissioner. We don't want to build all those parking spaces because they don't need it. But I think when we looked at the amount of square footage of office to R&D space they had to meet your guys' requirements for for PDB, thank you for what you know. We you think you would need? That's what justified that number. The reality of it is, is they're telling me to start. You know, it's going to grow to thirty, and then at the end of the lease, it's going to be at seventy-two. So. You know, hopefully we could get away with not putting in all those spots. There would be no, there would be no resistance to having more reserve parking. Right. No, right. right. We'll plan on it, but don't don't build it if it's not going to. Yes, be exactly right. We'll put it there, and if we have to, we'll come back and pave it. But you know, we, hopefully, if we get approvals tonight, we would come back to you with that request at some point. I, I believe. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Well, it's for not example, unusual to have deferred parking. Yeah, we, that's what we would like to do. We'll come back mm -hmm. with a uh, deferred parking to so say, listen, we know we, we can meet the requirements by the zoning commission, uh, but this is our tenant's requirement, so we'd like to modify the parking requirements for this parking. Can you right. point out on the site plan perhaps which, one, um, one, which parking spaces would not automatically be paved, but you would prepare yeah, the Yeah, site. we can do that right now. One second. Right. And then um, uh, Mr. Panico had some points. So, so I mean, yes, yeah, so what I was going to point out, uh, the, the one area where the parking goes right smack up to the building, we can leave that whole row of spaces out for the time being. Yeah, that's fantastic. Correct. Now, you've got, yeah. now you've got a 20 foot strip that you can do landscaping, and you can landscaping. modify the grading, and you can hide the unfinished foundation. Yeah, we're good with that, Tony. Yep. Okay. That makes sense. And, and even another portion of this, this lot doesn't need to be built, you know, so we can yeah. look at that. Woman, I also have some tonight. questions. Okay, um, and let me just ask, Mr. Panico, do you have? Did you have anything in particular regarding the parking? You want to continue to before you turn it over to Commissioner Parkins? No, I think uh, I'm glad to hear that they're not going to need all the parking they thought they were going to need. Okay, uh, and we'll work with them to eliminate uh, certain areas where it can easily be installed if at any time in the future a need developed. But mm -hmm. in the meantime, we can do more in that area directly opposite the building at the loading area to do some screening there just in case there was any short short circuit view. Uh, so we can do things like that, knowing that, that the space is there if they ever had to put them in. Right. Okay, Commissioner Parkins, what do you have? Um, so I just have two quick questions. One being um, trash removal. I don't see, it could just be in very tiny print, but I don't see any location for dumpsters um, so my question would be, where are they located and will there be any pallets or outdoor storage of any kind of um, pallet type in, you know, uh, material that would be stored outside until it's removed is one, my first question. Yes, ah, okay. It was very tiny. 
Okay, thank you. So it's right side, right outside of the, the loading dock. Um, so my second question is, does this, the manufacturer of what the manufacturing of whatever they are making require any sort of chemicals or is there any sort of oil or, or chemicals stored inside the building? And if so, is there containment areas to provide for any kind of spillage? Um, Commissioner, not that I'm aware of, no. I, I've seen there are other facilities around um, out of state and from what I've seen, no, they, they don't need any of that, no. Mm -hmm. Okay, how about the pallet question that's Commissioner the pallet, the pallet question, there wouldn't be any outdoor pallets because that's that would indicate it's, it's a warehouse operation and it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, and, the, and the question about the uh, compactor, one of those overhead doors Oh, at the end of the day, it would be turned into a uh, compactor. So mm -hmm. they would have a dump, a uh, container outside with an inside compressor, you mm -hmm. know, to, to, do, to do the trash. Isn't that something that's done up at Walmart around the, the corner? Of the I, 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 I suppose. The that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there'd be no pallets that this equipment is being moved out or in on? No, no, anything like that'll be inside. This this equipment okay. is very this equipment is very expensive equipment. It a pallets is it, it's, it's they're specially built. They're specially built <coughs> pieces of equipment. It's okay. similar to Ferro. Uh, you know, the Ferro has been in the valley forever. They make those very large pieces of equipment. I don't know if you've ever seen their operation. I have not. Okay, but that's the type of thing it, 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 that they make. Okay, thank you. So the finished product isn't something that's going to be boxed up. Oh, no. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. no. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's uh, sort of, I mean, wait, sort hey. of reminds me of when Sikorsky Aircraft are making their blades. They put big blades on trucks and move them out. So, yeah. Okay, um, Commissioner Romano, did you uh, have a question? Um, yeah, I did. I, uh, as usual, want to comment on the planting plan. Okay. Um, and I see a number of uh, native plants, which I appreciate, but wondering if for the understory trees, if you'd consider some native flowering trees instead, like an amelanchier or a cornus florida. And also, um, I'd really like to see you get rid of the butterfly bush. I agree. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Is the butterfly bush one that becomes unsightly because it grows and it, spreads or? It's uh, invasive in some localities. I don't oh. think it's invasive here. There's other, there's other reasons why it's controversial in terms of native plant advocates, which I won't go into unless you want me to do that. No. But I personally don't like it. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Anything else, Commissioner Romano? Uh, no. Okay. Commissioner Chair, I, I do have one further question. I'm sorry. Um, regarding the um, any trucks coming in for not FedEx or that those sort of deliveries, because we know that they're typically made during the day or up to seven o'clock, but you had indicated that the uh, folks would only be working from like eight to five or six o'clock. What about truck deliveries or truck coming to pick up equipment to deliver out? Is that, does that activity stop at six o'clock as well? Yes, absolutely. Okay, thank you. That's all. Okay, um, Commissioner Kelly, do you have any comments, questions or concerns? No, I know, Madam Chairman. I, I think it was well explained. Okay, Commissioner Laskaus, how about you? Uh, is the equipment to the size that would need uh, wide load permits or, or is it fit on a standard 18 wheeler? It fits on a standard 18 wheeler. It, 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 a forklift drives it into the 18 wheeler. It's big enough to make all the clearances and it puts it down. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Panico, do you have any further comments, questions or concerns? No, there's some very there's a variety of minor things that I'll get into with the applicant, but nothing significant. Uh, mm -hmm. Things like uh, deciding where to defer spaces, additional landscaping, additional landscaping treatments, things of that sort. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, anyone else? Does the applicant uh, have any further comments, questions, or concerns before we uh, open it up to the public? Madam Chair, can I finish? 
Yeah, if, if, as long as the the applicant, the commissioners, Mr. Panico, uh, are done, um, Mr. Rossetti, we're ready to turn it over to the public. So if you want to start with what um, the comments were that you received in writing from the public. Yep. Um, so this office received nine letters and a few phone calls, as previously stated. Uh, most of the residents who wrote in live um, by the Coram Gardens, Rivendell, or Plaskin Drive. Um, and so let, I will read a couple statements um, <clears throat> to answer their questions before um, the public hearing opens to hopefully shorten this up. This project has no bearing on Fountain Square, and this is not an appropriate location that is not an appropriate location for this use, and this is not the time to discuss that application. This project has no bearing on Petremont Lane, um, and this is also not the time to discuss that project. Um, there are no plans to alter or open the barrier at the end of Plaskin Drive extension to create a four-way intersection with Constitution Boulevard South. Many years ago, it was requested that the residents requested that it not be a four-way and it has remained that way and it, there are no plans to do that. And I will show you, um, give me one second. All right, hopefully everybody can see Google Maps. Here is the project location right up on top of this mound. The area where someone came up with the idea that it was going to be removed is over here. There is no work being done over here. This is three quarters of a mile away. There is no work being done on Plaskin Drive. Okay. This project is over here on the other side of Waterview Drive. Um, there is uh, someone asked about the feasibility of this project. As the applicant already addressed, they have a tenant lined up and are trying to build this uh, development within a year. There's a very high demand for warehouse and light industry space across the area. And this commission has been flexible with working with applicants um, and addressing these demands, and uh, especially with the Perkin Elmer space, uh, where we recently approved a light industry entity to occupy that area. Um, as previously mentioned, the Rivendell and Four Winds developments were exceptions for this area uh, and their residential uses. This has been, for over 40 years, a light industrial zone with corporate entities, light manufacturing, and warehousing uses. This is not new news. Um, the applicants have already addressed the, the jobs and the tax base. Um, again, they received a CTS approval uh, for the prior application for China Bank, which is a proposal that was three times the size and scale of this at 200,000 square feet plus with over 700 cars. And they're asking for a reduction in their parking amounts. This is a, a development with a, a tremendous amount of a less, sign or less significant impact. Um, and there's fortunately quite a bit of a natural barrier along Constitution Boulevard South and Waterview Drive, which will remain in place. Um, and as indicated on their plans, any um, impact they do have on top, um, they are gonna try and mitigate with uh, their landscaping plan. Um, we also received comments about, can the entrance be down on Constitution Boulevard South? The answer to that is absolutely not. Um, that would require a driveway at over 17% slope um, and it would request a kind of small water course at the bottom. Um, so that is the reason the layout is what it is. Um, but there are a few questions that the were left open that I don't know if were completely addressed um, that will probably come up from the attendees in, in, in uh, attendance today. Constitution Boulevard is very busy. We are concerned about safety on the road, especially during inclement weather. Will there be additional changes to ensure pedestrian and non-commercial vehicle safety? What will be done about increased traffic noise 
light and environmental pollution, both on the road and on site. Um, I think the applicant has done a good job of addressing the concerns of on-site conditions, um, indicating that this site will not be highly visible from any residential area. They are going to screen it. There are going to be buffers. They're reducing their parking area, uh, which would likely reduce the amount of lighting that would be required for an exterior space. Um, as for uh, meeting the demands of this use, um, you know, there is a range between 30 to 75 employees. That is not a high amount. There are way higher amounts in, in residential construction. Um, and with a maximum of 15 trailer truck loads, this is not an Amazon shipping warehouse. This is a manufacturing facility with a warehouse as an accessory use for that purpose. Um, and they've, this is an arterial road. It's been demonstrated that this road can support that type of usage. Um, but again, concerns about road infrastructure need to be addressed with the engineer's office and highways and bridges. Um, you know, we are not the roadway authority. But with that, I think we have addressed most, if not all of the concerns that have been raised by the public. Um, hopefully that clarifies things for those that are in attendance. Um, if you still have questions, feel free to raise your hand and I'll turn it back over to the chairwoman. Alex, this is Commissioner Parkins. I just have one um, helpful tip. Um, yep. Perhaps if you explain what CTS, the approval for CTS um, for the public might be a little helpful. You, sure. you mentioned prior approval for CTS. So yeah. so I have not been through the, through the process itself. So I will let Pat Rose or Tony Panico speak to the process of securing one of those. What was the question? The, what's the process for securing a CTS approval from the state, um, you know, for... You're talking about the CC approval? The Correct. Approval? Yeah. It's a, any any scaled project over what two hundred thousand square feet? Yes, the, and actually we don't we don't have that responsibility. It's it's really a building official responsibility that uh, before he issues building permits, uh, he has to, he has to be shown that it has been approved or cleared by the STC. That any necessary improvements that they mandate, they'll have to implement. It would it would seem it would seem that since they had an approval for the much larger facility, that's unlikely they're going to have to be required to do anything. But they may have to go through the formality of of officially showing that to the building official. I just thought the public would find that helpful. That information. Thank you. You're mm -hmm. Okay, is that it, Mr. Rossetti? That for me. Okay. Do you have anyone that's uh, indicated they'd like to? Uh, make comments from the public? Sure. So we've got three members with their hands raised. The first one on top is Norbert uh, Kropnik. Hopefully I said that right. I will allow him to speak. Okay. And um, uh, as you are, as you join the meeting, please spell your name and indicate your street address, please. And that's for our stenographer and our recording secretary. Uh, hello, can you guys hear me? We can hear you and we see uh, a letter N in your screen. Go ahead, Mr. Crow. Yep. Uh, my questions are answered. I live on Plaskin Drive Extension and um, I'm pretty much all set, so. Okay, what's your street address on Plaskin? 20 Plaskin Drive Extension. 20 Plaskin Drive Extension, all right. So you have nothing further to ask of the applicant nope, I'm good. Time? Very good. Thank you. And who's next, Mr. Rossetti? We have a Marge Paulson. Give her one second. Hello. Okay, we see Hello, you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go right ahead. Thank you. And your address, please. Hello, my name is Margaret Paulson, and I'm a 36-year resident of Shelton, living on 64 Sunset Drive. I'm here today to express my opposition 
to the proposed zoning changes in the areas around Waterview Drive and Constitution Boulevard. Mrs. This Mrs. Area Ms. Paulson, before you go any further, I wanna make sure you understand, this is not a zone change. That, that parcel had a zone change back in 2002. This Thank is you. for a modification for what that zone change was going to permit. This, that lot is already called a PDD zone. Mr. Uh, Panico, did I explain that correctly? Yes, and actually 15 years prior to the time it became a PDD, it was zoned LIP, the light industrial. So since 1985, it has been in some form of, indu of industrial zoning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what, what happened in 2002 and modified in 2008? Thank you. I've lived okay. here. I have lived here before planning and zoning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I've lived here before planning and zoning was created. Okay, what I'd like to continue is, hear me out, please. Mm -hmm. Is this, this area of our town is already high, heavily trafficked due to local businesses like Sikorsky Aircraft and Pitney Bowes, as well as because it is primarily an arterial route connecting Bridgeport Avenue and Route A at exit 13 with Route 110 in Shelton. For local residents living along this ever-growing corridor of our city means a constant stream of noise, light, and environmental pollution on a daily basis. And continuing to build and add an 80,000 square foot warehouse will only exasperate this issue. Local wildlife and fauna will be negatively impacted as well as nearby Native American rock shelters, which effectively undermines years of efforts made by the Conservation Commission and the Shelton Land Trust to preserve our town. We live in an area with a rich history and natural ecology that will be threatened by continued commercial and industrial development. Shelton has more than enough warehouse space already included. Long Hill Crossroads, Trap Falls, Forest Parkway, and what a review drive right across the street, totaling a collective of 164,000 square feet of space, of available space for this industry. To put this in perspective, that is approximately four football fields equivalent of land lost for conservation or for local community usage. The proposed addition of 80,000 more square feet of warehouse development represents a 43% increase in total area taken up by this single industry. This kind of growth is unprecedented and comes at the expense of local residents living in the surrounding areas who seem to benefit, benefit the absolute least Planning and zoning should work for the betterment of our community and local Shelton residents, but the proposed changes to this area of town appear to do the exact opposite. At the very least, the Planning and Zoning Committee has a civic responsibility to ensure that ongoing projects in our city are seen to completion and the old UI is a primary example of how such things can go wrong. As it stands today, this area is destitute and incomplete, leaving the eyesore of waste with zero contributions to our community and local economy. What area are, are you, did you just refer to, Ms. Paulson? I, I think I missed that. The old UI building. 
Okay, that's not part of this particular proposal. Right, but. Why? Because but, it's a different part of town, but, different street. But there are, there are concerns that this proposal will go the same route. Go ahead. Instead of adopting the zoning or instead of adopting this large scale project, perhaps we could scale it down to the betterment of our local community and the Shelton that our children will one day inherit. My concerns are that the trees will be there in the summer, but in the winter we'll see this project, you know? And you guys all know exit 13 always has a accident and traffic is gridlocked. Those people going out of that building at 5 p.m., if there's a, an accident, this will be a gridlocked city and all we will hear are those trucks going fully loaded up the slope and then down the slope, we'll hear their braking. And as you know, I have contacted you guys before because of that generator up um, at near Pitt and Bowes. Ms. Paulson, you have to address your comments to this particular application. If you have other concerns about other parts of town, that is something that you're no, more no, than welcome to talk to Ms. Rossetti, Mr. Rossetti about. But you. your comments have to address this particular proposal. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, I am worried about this proposal because the, the way the rock is here, sound reverberates like you wouldn't believe. It really does. And are they gonna have generators there? Okay, that's a question that they can answer. Go ahead. And I, I kind of like the idea. It's not that bad. I don't want to, you know, tell anybody what they can do with their land or what. But they, your commission is responsible for keeping everything and the people in place. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Thank Anything you. else? No, ma'am. Okay. Thank um, you. Mr. Rossetti, is there somebody? You're very welcome. Um, Mr. Rossetti, is there anybody else from the public? Yes, there is. Give me one second. Okay. Um, next up is a Roberta. Cesare, ooh, I'm not going to say that one right. So, Roberta, give me one second. Hi, good evening. My name is Roberta Ciccarelli, and I live at 153 Quorum Road. Um, I have two questions, and the first one is a two-part question. So, when you talk about, when you speak about the manufacturer moving, um, are they moving their facility from where they currently are now to the new Shelton facility? And if they are, how many employees do they have now? Okay, and your next question? My next question is, at the very beginning, it was stated that uh, part of the building is for research labs. I was just wondering what type of research are we talking about here? Is it physical research where there's hands-on research? Is it um, more or less a, a, a drawing application where things are, you know, um, 
how do I put it, designed. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I'm basically asking. Is it a physical research lab where things are being done? And what type of thing? Okay. okay. Um, so for the applicant, we have basically four questions. I don't know if you want to do that now or wait to the very end, but we have the questions that uh, Ms. Ciccarelli just mentioned, plus uh, the previous um, speaker had asked about generators. Can we just wait till the end and pile them up? Sure, as long as uh, you keep track of them. All right. Anything else, Ms. Ciccarelli? No, that's all. Thank you. Okay. Uh, who's next? Um, Mr. Rizzetti? Well, next is Joy. Joy, you should be able to speak. Um, you're, there you go. There you go. And let me start my video. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for this evening. I appreciate it. Um, I just want to state publicly that I'm always in support of corporations and smart Would growth. Can you your address, please, for the record? Sure. Sorry about that. 40 Woonsocket Avenue, uh, Shelton, Connecticut, 06484. Okay. Um, so I, I just want to state that, number one, I'm always for corporate growth. And number two, I think Bob Sinto does great work. Um, I do have concerns with this project and I'm going to state them now. And I'd just like to know, um, as far as trucks are concerned, my concern is the 18 wheeler trucks. I moved back here from Miami. I literally bought a second car, an SUV, because these, this is, as Bob alluded to, this is where the TB hospital used to be. These hills are quite high. And I can tell you that there are many times that we cannot, I have literally slid down the road with an SUV, my BMW X5, going down the road face first into that traffic. And so the reality is that I've talked to people in this community, I grew up here, and all of us at one point or another have literally had to park on the bottom of this road in the winter months and walk to our homes, literally. And so my concern is this, if I'm driving down that road and I see a truck that oftentimes these trucks cannot even make it up these hills, what is going to happen? Has a traffic study been done? Have, um, you know, my concern is more of the traffic and the concern is safety. Um, the reason why, you know, I'm looking at a bit those, that barricade is, is there a way to avoid, you know, swerve and go to the other side? Um, these are concerns that many residents have had. We voiced them. Um, this area does not get plowed well to the point for, that my landscaper for our condo complex has often called me and said he cannot even come in. So my concern is more safety issue. I'm not against growth. I love growth. And I think Bob does great work. So I just want to be the person who asks the tougher question. Is this the project? Is it the right one? Look, I, I've seen this plan. It looks reasonable to me. At the end of the day, I'm asking about safety. I'm asking about this community and is it the right growth? I mean, I looked at that commercial restaurant and gym as actually an asset because we don't have restaurants along this corridor, right? What commercial restaurant and gym are you referring but to? But that was the original plan, wasn't it? Commercial restaurant and gym, from what I understood. 231,000 square foot office that contained an inside restaurant okay. for the use of the employees and okay. a gym. That was one of their amenities. Okay. All right. So at the end of the day, you know, this is my question is, has the traffic study been done in regard to safety and hazardous conditions in this area? Okay. That's it. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Mr. Rossetti, is there somebody else? There is. One moment. Um, Megan, you are up next. Uh, 
Hi, uh, my name is Megan Duguid, and I reside at 87 Plascon Drive in Shelton, Connecticut. Um, I'm located right on the corner of Constitution and Plascon. So while this may not seem close to you guys in like sense of building and plans, whatever, it's pretty close for me. So um, my main concerns are pretty much the same as Joy's uh, safety truck being, you know, driven a lot. Like I think to say 10 trucks being driven in one day at the worst of it isn't a lot. I think that if you multiply that by 77 days, which I don't know if this is like a seven day type of business, but if it is, that's a question. Is this seven days? That would mean 70 trucks per week, which noisy, you know, it's noisy, it's dangerous, the weather. So I'm concerned about that. The second thing would just be, you know, the fact that our area doesn't have any through traffic other than the end of constitution south and north you know so like opening up Plascon extension would seem terrible to all of those people but it would be considered something that may be something more useful to the people that live in this area who don't have access to just drive up long hill drive and then get to some other businesses so i don't know if that could be considered at all but I mean, I think it would be helpful for the residents, maybe not so much the business. My second or third point is, I guess my other ones weren't really questions, but my third point would be that um, I would be concerned for me, I don't own this home, but as a homeowner, don't you think that our property values may go down a little bit having a warehouse functioning facility um, and as well as the residents who live in the condos I, and yeah, another point would be what about the winter and the view in the winter? So those are my questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, um, do we have somebody else, Mr. Rossetti? Give me one second. I'm just typing a few notes. Um, sure. <clears throat> okay, uh, next is Andrew. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, uh, this is Andrew Halfley. So this is his wife. This is Mary Beth Halfley. We're on this together. Um, mm -hmm. I live at 87 Plascon Drive. And um, my major concern is the safety um, and the traffic. Um, it, Constitution Boulevard um, is a very dangerous road right now for any resident or any person that's cutting through. Um, it's just people speed and there's a lot of traffic. Um, in the winter time, it doesn't matter where I'm coming from, ever, you know, for a job, whether it be up Southbury or Bridgeport, when I come home, Constitution Boulevard is my biggest challenge. Um, I fortunately do not have to drive up Plascon. I can just turn around and pull on my driveway, but getting Constitution is completely icy and it terrifies me to think about tractor trailers um, on that road um, in those conditions. So um, my question is, is there any, um, is anybody looking at that, you know, and, and that factor um, and what this will bring to um, that road. And then the other thing is um, exit 13, um, um, route eight, getting off exit 13. Again, multiple accidents, um, constant accidents, it's, it's dangerous. Um, and I'm concerned with tractor trailers coming off of exit 13 onto Constitution Boulevard will further um, back up traffic, you know, and cause issues there. So um, those are my concerns. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, does Mr. Halfley have any comments? Um, just kind of the same thing that everybody else was, our concerns were, because we live directly adjacent to Constitution Boulevard. Okay. And it's a, it's kind of, uh, uh, I agree with just about everything everybody said, but the one thing, it, it is not zoned for retail, correct? That would be my one. 
No. All right. That, that, that would be one question I had. I didn't know the original zoning. So, mm -hmm. okay. but that would be it. I just echo everybody else. So. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Happily. Mr. Rossetti, back to you for the next person. If there are any attendees or anybody who's calling in who would like to speak up, please raise your hand on Zoom uh, to indicate you would like to speak and we will happily let you comment. Yeah, if there's anyone from the public who uh, we have, uh, looks like there's 38 participants. This is the time that you need to raise your hand. Okay, we have a Michael Stoll. Okay, Mr. Stoll just needs to unmute himself. I did. Can you, you hear are, me? You're, you're now. You're good now. Okay. You see my spelling of my name, S-T-O-L-L. -L. I live at 65 Ridge Lane. Okay. So I submitted 23 questions, and I think all 23 have been answered. Um, I think I'm echoing quite a few people. Um, the conditions with the bus stops right here at the bottom of uh, Steep Brook and Constitution and the weather and the number of accidents – where Long Hill tees into Constitution. That's my major concern. Okay. Um, the development itself, the look of it, um, the details. I mean, it it's reasonable. I, I don't think it. I don't think it's going to kill the road. I mean, the road was just resurfaced. But uh, echoing everybody else, the safety and that road is is trash in the winter. So, going to have to be doing something about it during work hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Stoll? What's the name of the company? Or you can't, we can't say that? The applicant does not need to identify the exact company, but they did give us information as to what their line of work is. Um, when the applicant gets, uh, continues on uh, after we're done with the public portion, that's, but that's usually not the case that they identify themselves, the exact company, because it has to do with some confidentiality agreements or you know, contracts still to be signed. I don't know. It, it was just a matter of, of different things over the years that we've never expected to hear specifically on the, the name of a business, but what kind of business they were and what they intended to do. That, that makes sense. That's procedures. All right. I'm done. Thank you, Mr. Stoll. You're welcome. What is next, Mr. Rossetti? Okay. We have... Uh... Again, Marge Paulson has raised her hand again. Okay. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering if these are hazardous materials these are producing. Okay, we will, the uh, applicant will address that. Thank you. Okay. Chair Wong, this is Commissioner Tiki. Go right ahead. I see in the participant list some people called in, and so if they don't have the Zoom, they may not be able to raise their hand. So I just thought it would be helpful. I think if you're calling in and you wish to speak, that it's star nine. Star nine. In yeah. case you are calling in by a phone and don't have the Zoom app on your phone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is uh, anyone that I see that has the uh, phone symbol? Last three numbers, 503-607-744-829. Uh, if you want to comment, you hit, need to hit star nine. And there's somebody else at 829 as well. There's a total of four that are calling in. Mr. Rossetti, do you see anybody uh, taking that action? I get it. Okay. All right, so last call. Anybody uh, from the public before the applicant? Um, 
answers the questions that have been presented. Okay. All right, so uh, Mr. Sinto, Mr. Rose, uh, which, where do you want to start off? I can, I can comment. This is Bob Sinto. Mm -hmm. There won't be any generator on, on the site. Okay. Um, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the type of research is, is to uh, develop better, better methods to produce their product and make their product more effective. It's basically engineering. engineering. Mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering is a type of research that's taking place there. Okay. Yeah. And as far as the traffic, um, at, at the you know the roads, those are town responsibilities. Mm -hmm. um, so the town's done a fairly decent job. There, there is a truck company that's there already that, that does a lot of trucking down there. Um, and um, I understand everyone's concerned for safety, but that road is the the road has just recently been repaved. And uh, it should be in a very good condition once the repaving is completed. Okay. And um, is this a, did the applicant or the prospective tenant indicate this was a, a five day or seven day operation? It's five days. Five days, Monday through Friday then? Monday through Friday. Okay. Uh, da, 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 just looking. And there, one other thing, uh, there's no hazardous materials involved. Okay. Right. All right. Um, any commissioners have any comments, questions, or concerns? Mr. Panico, do you have any comments, questions, or concerns? Not at this time, Madam Chairman. Okay. So, if uh, every all the members of the public that are participating have one, been given one moment, I just want to finish addressing all their questions. Oh, sure. Um, We'll go back to the list. Um, there were two other questions. One was about generators being on site. The other was about blasting. The other, again, was about the opening of Plaskin Drive. Um, if you would like to open the extension of Plaskin Drive, you can discuss that with your neighbors and petition the city administration and highways and bridges. Um, mm -hmm. We've addressed hazardous materials, so it's it's really blasting generators on site. Uh, and someone also mentioned property value. Uh, Bob, if you would, I think you're a pretty strong advocate for marketplace and how uh, local economies tie in with the housing market. I would say that this type of a project is a very clean, brings good jobs, adds to the tax base, and keeps shouting mill rate substantially below everyone else in Fairfield County. Our operating expenses, our taxes in Trumbull are $2 more per square foot than Shelton. Uh, that's why Shelton is such an attractive location because it's had such good development. You know, the commission has been responsible for that. Um, so if anything, this would add to property values and not be, not be taxed not take away from the property values. Um, there, there was a question from uh, Ms. Ciccarelli that I just saw again. Uh, how many employees do they have now? Robbie? Um, currently they're, they're headquartered out of Manhattan. So they're gonna be moving their executive office from Manhattan down to here, which consists of roughly 15 people. Mm -hmm. And they hope to hire another 15 people within the first year. So it, 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 they have existing facilities throughout the U.S. and throughout um, Europe. Oh, this facility, okay. this facility is basically designed for the executive office, research development, and you know, finding new technologies. Basically, building out new technologies and then testing them out of here. So okay. for the most part, this is all except for the executive office out of Manhattan. This would all be new job creation which mm -hmm. is expected to be about 30 people in the first year, 70 people, at 72 people all together. All right, so this is an international company whose headquarters would then end up being in Shelton, Connecticut. Yes, from okay. Manhattan to Shelton. Yes. From Manhattan to Shelton. Not a relocation of a Shelton firm. Yep. That's what was kind of suggested there. Yeah. 
No, it's not. Um, Mr. Panico, did you start to say something? Well, I was just going to comment on what you just said, Madam Chairman. Okay. Uh, but I did have one other one other thing that was raised. The question was raised about the uh, the screening in the winter time versus the summertime. So maybe Pat could or Bob could make a comment or two. Is that deciduous or are they evergreen trees? The majority of the trees that are along part of your drive are evergreen trees, actually. Okay. The majority of them. There, are, there is you know obviously there is some. Uh, deciduous uh, vines and things like that that are growing in them, but it, most of them are evergreen trees. Okay, so we don't have a lot of maples or oaks that are going to lose no, their leaves, no, and then no, you see a lot of no. open branches. Okay, okay. All right. Anybody else, commissioners, staff, Mr. Panico? No, I think most of the other comments were really. Uh, suggestive rather than uh, mm -hmm. impossible to address the, the concern about property values going down. Uh, we've never seen it. We, we've never experienced it before where new, co new commercial or industrial development has resulted in, in a lowering of property values. And there's no yeah, I think it's been po properly yeah. positioned as it's a clean kind of um, occupancy. This okay. is not a smoke belching coal plant or something that Nobody would want to. And I think the other thing uh, in relation to, to one of the discussions about preservation of natural land, et cetera, we're taking away all of this natural vegetation and topography, but that is the purpose of zoning and development. If we were going to stop economic development because we wanted to save the trees, well, then we should really stop all development, including building houses, et cetera because they take away trees as well. We zone, we zone for future growth and we try to do it in a reasonable way. This the commission does as much long range planning as they're able to. And uh, you have to go with whatever the market calls and how you want it to be developed. So mm -hmm. the Conservation Commission has done a fantastic job in preserving green belts throughout the community. And we've been working closely with them whenever we possibly can. Mm -hmm. We'll continue to do so. I, I think it is interesting to note the evolution of building because for a number of years I worked on at the site where uh, Perkin Elmer is now. I also worked on the site that's behind uh, the building that's behind Duchess and those buildings had certain amenities with them and that's not necessarily the case. This is a streamlined kind of facility that seems to be proposed. Uh, um, you, you don't tend to have companies building buildings these days with uh, cafeterias or gyms or whatever. It's uh, just not seen. Obviously, the employee the trend anymore. doesn't warrant something like a cafeteria. Yeah, not, no. not with a maximum of seventy employees. <laughs> yeah, uh, when you so okay. Anything else from the public, uh, Mr. Rossetti? I'm um, just double checking, but nope, not for now. Again, if anyone from the public would like to speak up, please raise your hand or okay. press star nine on your phone. All right, well, I think we have given the uh, public sufficient uh, amount of time to uh, identify themselves. And we have had um, nine people from the public did comment, so. Uh, we did receive the number of uh, written communication to the office. And um, so is there anyone, any commissioner would like to make a motion to uh, close the public hearing for this particular application? I'll make the motion to close the public hearing. Okay, that's Commissioner Motto. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll second. Oh, go ahead, Charlie. Okay, <laughs> okay there's a motion to set, uh, close second from Commissioner Kelly. So on the motion to close the public hearing for application 21-20 from Commissioner Motto, seconded by Commissioner Kelly, I'll do a roll call. Commissioner Parkins? Aye. Commissioner Tickey? Aye. Commissioner Laskos? Aye. Commissioner Kelly? Aye. Commissioner Motto? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay. Um, so, what's the consensus of this particular of the commission for this proposal? 
Is this something that we need to discuss in more detail, um, or or do we feel or do you feel comfortable enough to direct staff to prepare an appropriate resolution for this uh, application to be on the agenda of an upcoming meeting? So, Roman, I don't think there's any other information that's um, that's required from the applicant at this point. The only um, new information would be to change some of the uh, current proposed parking to reserved parking rather than, you know, just leave it green rather than pavement. So I, I would be in favor of moving forward with a resolution. Okay. I would, I would too. I think we don't need to belabor it. Mm -hmm. I also okay. believe the same thing. All right. So those, uh, that's Commissioner Mato, Commissioner Parkins, Commissioner Kelly, Commissioner Tiki, what about you? Yeah, I, I could move in that direction. I do just want to be sure that we can get the um, just the letters from the engineer and the fire marshal on the record and to the commission and also post it up so people know what was said in the letters. Um, I mm -hmm. think that would just be helpful information to see what um, those city entities said before we we um, moved on it, which would be the case if we can get that around um, yeah, I think during business hours, you know, post it up and, and around to the commission. Yeah, I, I think it's a, a, it's a matter that City Hall is normally closed on Monday and it definitely was closed on Monday because of the um, Labor Day holiday and it, it didn't get posted yesterday. So I'm sure Mr. Rossetti will make sure that those do get posted. Uh, Commissioner Lascos, what about you? What's your feeling on- I think uh, we should proceed to, um, to a, mo a, mo a resolution. Resolution for a moment. Okay. All right, I would agree with everyone. So uh, based on, the, on what I've just heard from the rest of the commissioners, I believe we have a consensus for staff to prepare a resolution on this particular application. And that will be uh, on the agenda of, of an upcoming meeting. And uh, there will be discussion before, we just don't go to that agenda item and immediately go to a vote. We do, uh, the, the resolutions that Mr. Panico and staff prepare are detailed and go over several aspects of the, um, the uh, proposal. All right, so moving on, next agenda item is application. Oops. Is there a question? No, nope. no, I have to get back to my email here. Okay. <laughs> to read right. the. Yep, let me just introduce it as uh, the next agenda item is application number 2119. Mike Bolero, 204 Long Hill Avenue. And Commissioner Amato, just go ahead with the rest of the uh, legal notice when you're ready. Okay, just a sec. Oh, here it is. Okay. Uh, initiation of application 21-19, Mike Valero at 204 Long Hill Avenue, Assessor's Map 105, Lot 83, for a special exception in an R4 zone on 0.39 acres to convert a single family house to a two family house. Lewis Associates prepared the plans titled Zoning Location Survey. The property is generally bounded as follows, Northern, northerly by 56 Wakely Avenue Extension, easterly by 10 High Plains Road, southerly by 214 Long Hill Avenue, westerly by Long Hill Avenue. Very good. Um, just a note for the record, this application was accepted for review on August 10th. 2021, the special exception application, a zoning location survey, two interior floor plans, revised elevations and floor plans, exterior elevation plans, pictures of the existing condition, pictures of the proposed roof edge, and comments from the city engineer were posted to the city's website. Um, Mr. Rossetti, any comments received from the public that we need to acknowledge for the record at this time? No. Okay. And Mr. Rosetti, are there any reports from the city engineer and the fire marshal? There are not. Again, this is not something that they would comment on. It's really kind of the reconstruction of an existing single family home. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and who's representing the applicant? Could you identify yourself? Uh, I'm Mike, Mike Bolero, uh, 27 Sportsman Drive in Shelton, Connecticut. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bolero. You can go ahead and uh, proceed with your presentation. And um, Mr. Rosetti, I guess you have the, the plans to put up on this share screen. 
Yes, I will pull them up. Okay. So everyone uh, should be familiar with this particular location. It's at the bottom of Long Hill Avenue before the street crosses under the Route 8 to Stephen Sullivan Avenue, rather. And this was the site of a fire and it's the applicant would like to rebuild this, but as a two family. Mike, if you'd like to explain your project, now would be a appropriate time. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, thank you. Um, the house, the house that was a cape, it burned, it burned partially down. At this time, I've taken about 50% of it down. Um, I, I'm just waiting on it to hopefully get this approval so I can begin to you know, rebuild it. Um, mm -hmm. I got the parking there. There's also some additional parking there that's town property, but it's right up against the front of the garage. So there's two spaces there. So there's plenty of parking. Um, it's kind of a small house, uh, which is it's going to stay. We're not, we're not changing the footprint at all. Mm -hmm. We're just going to go up and uh, instead of the attic, we're just going to frame eight foot walls where the attic was for the second unit. Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward. It's, uh, it's <coughs> so what's up on the <coughs> can you see what's up on the screen? No, no. he's calling in. Okay. That just want to make sure because some people watch, but they communicate by phone. Um, no, I can't. I can't see, but I know. I, you know the plans and stuff. I know them by heart. Yeah, what's um, Mr. Rossetti has up is the back elevation, so okay. you have a clear indication of the staircase to the second floor entry, uh, yes. and how about um, the side elevation? Is the left side elevation is where the entry would be. That's sheet three, and that is where the yes. first floor apartment entrance would be. Um, yes, it's actually an existing entrance. Okay. There are there these would be two separate units altogether, no connectivity interior between the upper and lower floors. That's correct. Okay. And and what did you plan to do in the attic space? Is there something uh, there? Uh, the attic space, the original attic space, which is gone now. Will yeah. become the 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 second unit. Really? Oh, it's actually completely gone. Mm -hmm. There's no room. Oh. There's no second floor. Okay. So you're not going to have a separate attic above the the upper apartment. No. 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 It'll yeah. be very small, just a normal normal attic space with the between the ceiling joist and the roof rafter. Just the I think it's four feet. Okay. In the middle. Yeah. Is that more like a little bit more than crawl space? Yeah. Yes, a little bit more than crawl space, exactly. Yeah. We're just going to insulate it and mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I'll put a scuttle hole somewhere just for access, but it won't be anything up there at all. Right. Yeah. It's not intended to be livable quarters at all. Not at all, no. Okay. All right. And uh, what else do you want to tell us? Um, just, just that we're completely rebuilding it, um, except for maybe 50% of the framing. And of course, the foundation is going to be completely brand new inside and out. Vinyl mm -hmm. siding. I had some pictures there. Um, you know, asphalt shingles, roof, all new and everything new. Okay. Absolutely everything except for 50% of the framing and the foundation and utilities. Okay. Um, you know, there's the picture there of uh, the front of the building. And when you look at drawing number one, that elevation seems to be totally flush from the peak of the roof all the way down. Is but you're going to have a bump out? No, no, no. Um, no there's a bump out now. Yeah. Down on a lower level. Right. That's going to be framed up two stories high to give me the enough square footage in both units. Okay. But that down lower level, that's strictly basement. Oh, okay. So that's a basement. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A full, full, full walk-in basement. Okay. Mr. Panico, do you have walk any, in um... from the front. Yeah. yeah I just wanted to make okay. one comment. Um, sure. Can we see that entire elevation that we're looking at now, or is that just doesn't work graphically? 
You can, no, can the front can, elevation of the building. Uh, originally, the, the, the basement level was a projection and it had a roof line to it and it sort of softened the whole elevation towards the street. Now, now we won't have that roof feature anymore. You're going to have, in effect, two stories plus uh, plus the roof, the roof gable, plus the foundation all being exposed. It, it's a rather stark elevation. And I was it's wondering- actually all, It's all framed. It's not foundation on the front. I understand that. But what you have in appearance is a very imposing three and a half, three-story building with a gable roof on it. And I was wondering yeah. if you would give some consideration to perhaps changing the design of the roof to a hip roof so as to cut that visual appearance down a little bit? Is that something that you could consider or not? I, I could look into it. I um, no, that steps in a, a foot on each side. So it's a little bit more narrow than the rest of the building. I, mm -hmm. I'll definitely consider it. I, you know, yeah, I try to, I'm, just, I'm just concerned that visually it's going to be a much less attractive building than it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, oh, no. <laughs> On the contrary, Valero? Tony. It's, uh, yes. Well, Mr. Valero, what's the basement going to be used for? Are you going to have laundry facility down there, or is it storage, or no, what is it? No, it's a, it's a basement. Um, that we're going to be working on it for a long time. We got a. Uh, well, what a, use will the out. tenants have for this? Well, yeah, will the tenants they have no use for the basement? The tenants will not have any use of the basement at all. Uh, yeah, I mean, just water heaters, basically. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, well, you're not going to build that out to be a separate third living unit, right? No. No. <laughs> no, no. It's, it would. It would. It wouldn't work. So. It's an old basement. It's a rock foundation in concrete. It would never mm -hmm. put too much in How high is uh, the ceiling? I didn't, measure, I didn't measure that, but I'm going to guess and say seven foot, maybe okay. seven and change. All right. Well, where the girder is, it's, you know, it's six and change. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's strictly basement area. All right. Well, you can tell from the plans that there's no interior access from the lower apartment. And uh, no. we just want to confirm that that's not going to uh, be changed at all. Okay. No, it's any, not. Com any commissioners have any questions, comments, or questions? Uh, comments, questions, or Sarah, woman, I have a. Go ahead, Commissioner. I, I have. A, I have a couple of questions. Um, what is the square footage of each of these apartments? Six hundred square feet. Each. Okay. Each. And is there any thought to providing a cover? for the stairway going up to the second floor um, to provide shelter from the elements and to prevent um, people sliding down if it were to be snowy or icy? And if so, what would you propose the material to be? I, I, I wasn't planning that because it is a deck. Um, to, decks are to, to usually out in the elements, especially for your deck. I think Commissioner well, Parkins was referring to the stairs going up. The stairs up. Is that yes, the I only see. way to access the second floor is from the outside? Yes. That's what I was referring to, that, that entryway up to the second floor. In the, back, in the back elevation, you mean? I believe it was the side elevation, no? The back oh, the side elevation, elevation is a uh, high one. That stairway oh, okay. to the I second was not planning. The was floor not planning has been moved around to the back. It's How, however you access the second floor, it appears that the stairway to access the second floor is covered and open to the elements. Is there any constat of that elevation right there? It is. It is open. It, it goes up to a six by 12 deck and the entry to the apartment is there. I was not planning on covering it, to be honest. I like the deck to be outdoors. No, no, this, apartment, I think that's a good a small point. Deck. The stairs could very well be really impassable if there was eight inches of snow on those stairs. How would anybody even get into their apartment? They would be they would be shoveled off. Is that something the landlord is going to take liability for? I just I just think it's a liability on your part, to be honest with you. I understand. I um, had no plans of covering that if. Uh, 
if it's a, if actually, I'm not sure where, how it would look with the, it would be a low roof. It would not be get, interfering with the gable with the, yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying it would work, and I'm not saying it's required. Well, I, I don't see it works. I don't think it. I don't think it works there. I, I just think it should be a concern on your part. I'll take a look at it. I uh, again, the people. You know, people have a grill. They cook outdoors. They, they can't cook under a roof. We're not talking about the whole. With a small apartment, they, they should have a small deck as well. Mr. Valero, the Commissioner Parkins is not referring to the deck. She's referring to the staircase. Just the stairs, but the stairs lead up to a deck. That's that's what I mean. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but that's the only entrance, correct? That's the yeah. only entrance, the only way to get up to that apartment. Correct. Um, maybe, uh, Mr. Panico or Mr. Rossetti, you can answer, is having only one way of going in and out of a second floor apartment permitted by code? It is with uh, egress the windows. The size of the unit it is. Okay. But the windows have to be egress, of course. Right. Mm. Okay. Any other commissioners have any comments, questions, or concerns? Mr. Pianico? Yes. Do you have anything that you want to uh, mention? No, no. You know, my only concern was what I mentioned about the starkness of the elevation facing the street and the ability to perhaps soften it if, if the roof lines. I will certainly work on that. Mm -hmm. that. That would be my only suggestion. It, it depends on what, whether the applicant can do it or not. Okay. I'll certainly try, Tony. Okay. Okay. Uh, so is this is this building any higher than what was there originally? Yes. It, it's uh, very little at the peak. Yes, at the how peak. How much? It is. How much? I'm uh, just... I, I'd say. Uh, bear with me one second. Here. It's only a couple of feet at the peak because it was a very steep roof. Oh no, Mike, that's not true. What's that? It's not the second floor. Your proposed second floor unit is essentially at the floor level yeah, a, of the attic, correct? It's about four, it's a, it's about four foot. Mike, looking at the plan here. Am I right he that your sec, Mike, am I right that your second floor unit is essentially at the your old attic level, correct? It is, but the peak of the roof was way up in okay. that attic. Okay. So it, it's a few, it's a few feet higher at the peak. And the walls, of course, and some of the walls yes. were already okay. out. At six I, feet. You're right. It's four or five feet. I thought you were so. I thought I thought you were suggesting it was less than that. It's about five feet no, more, no. maybe. No, I it's, can't it's, tell it's from the picture. I don't know what the pitch of the old roof was, Mike. Understood, Mike. If if your pitch is essentially going to be the same as the old roof, then the the uh, no. eve. Of the old then it would be a lot higher. The eave, yeah. the eave elevation has to raise about eight feet. Isn't that correct? Uh, no, not in this. Or case is there a knee the wall? Was, there. It's hard for there me. Was to knee wall, there was a knee wall. There was a knee wall. There was a couple of dormers as well. Okay. I don't have pictures of the old building. All right. It was. It was almost. It was halfway to where it is now. On, a, on the left side, it was already a dormer. Okay, so, so there's, there's, a, six feet. there's a knee wall on the outside wall. Okay. See, exactly. I can't, I can't exactly. tell it just from six looking at the knee wall. Yeah. All right, I'll take your word for it. Okay. But when you remove when you remove the roof on the projected basement and it suddenly becomes solid wall, you get a you get a greater vertical impact. That was the reason. Yes, I, I understand. I understand exactly what you mean. If you could possibly consider a, a hip roof, it would. I think it would be visually I'm, helpful. I, I agree that something does need to be done. I, I'm not sure if we can hit the roof. I'll, I'll talk to a carpenter about it. We'll take a look at it maybe. Comes you, in. Maybe you'll come up with another idea. I, I will, I'll certainly work on it, Tony. Okay. Anybody else? <clears throat> Okay, um, there's no other comments, questions, or concerns from the commission. Is there anyone else? Um, 
until we do, we do have some things that are a little vague that has to be looked into. So I'm wondering if it's uh, a good idea if we close the public hearing or should we not continue it? Um, Mr. Pianico, what do you feel? The nature of the project that we're dealing with, I don't think we should prolong it or belabor it. Mm -hmm. uh, your basic concern is, is the lot big enough? Is the, is the structure big enough to be the two families, et cetera? And some reasonable concern over the architecture. Uh, mm -hmm. We pretty much explored it and we beat it around and changed it around quite a bit. Uh, and we worked with, with these last concerns that I've mentioned really only came about as a result of finding out that the, the units were not large enough. So in order to bring them into compliance, Mike has added floor space on the on the first and second floor above where the projected basement was on the front of the building. Mm -hmm. And that just sort of introduced some visual concerns that I had. But mm -hmm. I think Mike knows what our concerns are and I, and I, I have confidence that he's gonna do a good job. Um, it's not Thank like we're building a, a, a 25 story building here. Mm -hmm. um, I'd no. say let's just get it off the back burner and let it go. Mm -hmm. Mike, is that a the the notice for the public hearing? Is that's what is that what is posted on the building? Where is the notice posted for the public hearing? It's there on the front of the building. It's right, I think that's it right there, isn't it? It's, it's yellow. Yeah, that's the notice. Um, it could... And that's going to be the new exterior wall all the way up to the peak. Correct. Yes, uh, but we, we're going to break it up somehow. Uh, uh, like said, the roof line. But the lower level, the lower level. Once I get done there in the front, you know, there's going to be evergreen trees. You're not really going to. It'll take a year or two, but it'll be completely covered. The basement level. But I, I, I do agree with what he means. We don't want a big blank wall. Yes. I understand. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. yeah. As long as you execute what uh, has been referred to. So that the front elevation is uh, not so glaringly huge, then I think uh, I, I sure will. I certainly okay. will. All right. Any uh, last comments, questions, or concerns from the commission? Okay. Is there a motion to uh, close the public hearing? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing, Commissioner Parkins. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Parkins. Motion to close. Is there a second from anyone? A second. A second from Commissioner Motto. So on the motion to close the public hearing for application 2119 from Commissioner Parkins, seconded by Commissioner Motto. I'll do a roll call. Commissioner Kelly? Aye. Commissioner Laskos? Aye. Commissioner Parkins? Aye. Commissioner Motto? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Tickey? Aye. And chair votes aye. Um, does the commission feel that it's received sufficient information to act on this application this evening? I think so. I think it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Cut and dry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, so many building permits are going to be pulled and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. So, Commissioner Kelly, you have any reservations about moving forward on this tonight? No, no. I think it's a good idea. You know, if you, if you leave it abandoned. You're going to have vandalism and whatnot. So now we're rehabbing something that was uh, destroyed. Okay. Commissioner Tiki, how about you? I would agree. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Laskaus? Yeah, it's not very complicated. Uh, I think you can proceed. Okay. Commissioner Mato, I think you spoke up. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Okay. All right, so um, does someone want to make a motion to approve the special exception for application 2119? I'll make, I'll make that motion. Okay, motion to approve by Commissioner Kelly. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll second. Okay, Commissioner Amato is seconded. So on the motion to approve application 2119 made by um, Commissioner Kelly, seconded by Commissioner Amato, do a roll call. Commissioner Laskos? Aye. Commissioner Parkins? Aye. Commissioner Tiki? Aye. Commissioner Motto? Aye. And Commissioner Kelly? Aye. And your vote size. So motion to approve is passed six to zero. And so that is 
the, uh, the end of, of that particular application. So we're moving on to other business. The first is approval of the minutes for oh, August 10th meeting. And does uh, anyone have any uh, comments or changes to the August 10th meeting? Is there someone trying to speak? Okay, uh, what I would uh, have is just um, under section five, old business, the third paragraph, just clarifying that uh, it's the city engineer that has no issues regarding the subdivision for this, that was application 2114, so that it's clear that it's a city engineer and not just maybe a project engineer. Um, under, app, under further down on the page under application 2118, uh, light, it's a 17,680,000 square foot light industrial space building. We're building, I, I would uh, ask that that be add there, added there because you may not uh, construe light industrial space as actually being in a building, but it may be. Um, oh, flipping over to uh, page four under comments from the chair and subcommittee chair. Uh, this was uh, we're talking uh, about what had been, um, I reported on what had been uh, discussed that morning at the SEDC meeting. And it, uh, number two talks about restoration of the LOTS, L-O-T-S, it's LOCKS, L-O-C-K-S. We're talking about the LOCKS that are on Canal Street. And I think the final is, uh, the, uh, just a notation under um, Section D on the last page, minutes available for review on the website for the following meetings. Uh, that I noted that the July 28th minutes were available on the for review uh, by the commissioners on the city's website. So uh, that's about it. Is there anyone that has any other comments about the uh, August 10th minutes? Okay, hearing none, is there someone that wants to make a motion to approve? We'll make a motion to approve with your comments and corrections. Thank you, Commissioner Parkins. Is there a second? Commissioner Tiki will second. Thank you, Commissioner Tiki. So on the motion to approve the August 10 minutes uh, with the uh, comments that I just uh, went through from Commissioner Parkins, seconded by Commissioner Tiki. I'll do a roll call. Commissioner Kelly? Aye. Commissioner Laskos? Aye. Commissioner Tiki? Aye. Commissioner Parkins? Aye. Commissioner Motto? Aye. And Chair votes aye. Um, just a notation on the agenda that uh, the August 17th, 2020, 2021 minutes are available on the website for review and they'll be on an upcoming agenda for approval. Uh, so seeing that there is no other item on the agenda, the chair declares the meeting adjourned as of 8.07 p.m. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night, Good night everyone. Thank you.